Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tears in Tool Talk, a podcast that's dedicated to celebrating women who are showing up from within the chaos of everyday life to reconnect with their color. I'm here with Margaret Harding, a longtime friend of mine. Margaret, I'm so happy you're here. I'm excited. Yes, we go way back. Margaret, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? So my name is Margaret Harding. Um, I live in Indiana by way of New York and Barbados. Um, I work on a casino boat. I am a, a licensed mariner, so I'm a sailor. Um, I enjoy volunteering. I enjoy traveling. And one of my, um, all of that has led to a passion project of mine, which is states of service. So I will travel to different states to volunteer. So I combine two things that I absolutely love. And I get to meet an amazing array of people. And um, volunteering is actually how I met Gina. So it's perfect. Yes. Um, you and I met years ago through Habitat for Humanity. Mm -hmm. And we did a really cool uh, fundraising project together um, called Fashions for Foundations. And uh, uh, interestingly enough, you wore a designer skirt that was made by your sister back yes. then. So um, you and I have been like doing the designer skirt thing together <laughs> for for years now, if you really think about it. So I'm excited yeah. to have you on today. Thanks All for right. having me. Yes. Um, so we start every show out with a tears and tool moment. We call those the even when, especially thens of life. It's basically saying something uh, positive that you like about yourself and pairing it with something that might not be exactly how we expect life to go. And then we end with especially then to say we're able to show up in that space even when life throws us those curveballs. So I know I reached out to you ahead of time and asked you what your moment was. I'd love to hear it, Margaret. Okay, so um, I mentioned this earlier. This is a little harder than I thought it would be. Um, so I went with, I am outstanding, especially when I feel like others don't understand me and I'm being hard, especially hard on myself, especially then. Oh my gosh. I can so, thank you for sharing that. I can so relate to that in my own life, like doing your own thing. And I just have to say that, you know, witnessing your growth throughout the years, what you're doing in the world and how you're bringing your, your magic and um, how you're helping people to find their own uh, has been an absolute example of how you are living that, how you're doing that, even though I know from personal experience, it can't always be easy. So uh, thank you for sharing your heart and um, that vulnerability with all of us. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, so there's so many things I actually want to talk to you about, but I'm going to dive into, um, you were one of the first. So for anyone who's just joining us now, we have trailblazers and we have tribes. And basically a tribe is run by a tears and tool trailblazer who is sort of blazing their trail, showing up in the world and teaching others how to do the same. So you're one of our first tribe leaders um, and you have this beautiful tribe. I think this, your skirt's in New York now, I believe. Yes, that, it's still in New yes. York. Okay. It's in New York. Oh my gosh, pandemic time's been nuts. But um, you were one of the first tribe leaders. And so that's really exciting to talk to you about just your whole experience from having your skirt made to receiving it to wearing it and your photos were so real it was like just getting to watch you walk through different areas of your life and watching you do it in a rainbow tool skirt and <laughs> sort of show everyone I, I, there, I can't even pick a favorite of the ones that you posted um though I love the the close-up with the headband on and I love the one where you're curled up like you know, you're just resting when you need to. And it's such a good example for all of us. So tell me all about it. I want to hear all about um, from the moment the idea was conceived to the moment that it actually went off to New York to someone else. Okay. So um, <laughs> I named my tribe uh, Diamonds and Pearls because both of those beautiful items are made from irritations. It started off as a irritation somewhere under pressure 
under harsh conditions and it bloomed into something beautiful. So I thought that fit beautifully for what Tears and Tools is standing for. So um, my sister actually made the skirt, the same uh, sister that made the construction dress. And the skirt got to me and I kind of already knew what it was going to look like. So it wasn't a surprise, but the concept for the photos was a little bit of a surprise. I wasn't sure how I was going to express myself. And I was out of town at the beginning of the pandemic um, in that February, March timeframe. And I just gotten the notice from work that they were gonna close the business and all these things were rapidly happening. Airports were saying they were gonna shut down. Um, I didn't know how I was getting home. My bus service from Chicago to Indiana had shut down. So I had begun to really stress out. And my sister looked at me and said, go sweat. Sweating calms you down. So literally she made me change into my gym clothes, take my iPod and go to the gym. And I was like, that's where I want to take my pictures. I do work out quite a bit. Um, and that's where I release my energy. That's where I dance it out. I get silly. I punch imaginary things. I get the negative energy out so I can stay positive. Um, I'm also an aerobics instructor, which can take some people by surprise because I am plus size. But I think the reason my students like coming to my class is I help them release their negative energy. So we have that hour of positivity. So when she said that, I'm like, this is where I want my pictures. I want it in the gym. Um, I want to show where I get some of my peace from. So of course we were at a hotel and it was perfect. Um, and I wanted to show kind of that progression from me stressing out. That's why I curled up in a ball in the, in the uh, dress that was supposed to be, be kind of representing me being depressed and stressed and anxiety ridden and then making my way to the gym and holding on to the weights and being on the machines. And I absolutely must wear a headband anytime I work out. And even when I volunteer, I, I've got over 70 headbands. So that had to be part of the picture, headbands and the tool skirt and the gym. <laughs> so that's where the pictures came from. Um, I then sent my skirt to New York back to my sister. She's the one that made it. She has taken pictures. Um, it's been a journey for her. Um, it opened up some things that she wasn't quite sure she was ready to share, but she wasn't quite sure she wanted to stay bottled up. So she wow. still has the skirt. And the next intended um, recipient is my mom who lives in New York as well. So the it's had a extended stay in New York, but a good stay, a good home. <laughs> I love that. I love that it's like right now a mother-daughter skirt and journey. And I love that your sister is taking the time to work through whatever's coming up because I think that's what Tears and Tool is all about, making space for the, the both, for the hard stuff and for the magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, I, I didn't know, I knew it was in New York and I was like, woo, when is it, when are we gonna see pictures? So I, I love that the wait will be so worth it to see her photos and um, to know they're going to your mom is super cool too. Yes. Yeah, I can't I, wait I to see. Say, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I, I can't wait to see what they come up with because I think they wanted to do a joint thing too. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. Has this, it hasn't been done yet. There haven't been a mother-daughter. Um, She'll love that then. <laughs> yes, she would be the first. Uh, and this is the same sister that made the construction skirt, yes. right? The same designer. Yes. Um, gosh, I should try and post that somewhere so everyone can see it. We have, I remember having the pictures of you out at the Habitat site with the, mm -hmm. um, for those of you who are, who are listening and wondering, um, Margaret's sister made this amazing construction themed dress based on uh, an illustration that was yes. made ironically by the same illustrator that just illustrated my book, Elena Michelotis. Um, she made this really cool construction themed illustration, you know, like a pencil in the bun and there were paint brushes on the, um, mm -hmm. the skirt. 
And then you had come to us because you were on the uh, fundraising. I was on uh, the committee. Yeah. The committee. And you said that your sister was interested in making like a real live version of that skirt. And it was just so cool to see it come to life. You wore it during the fashion show, you know. Um, I still have it. <laughs> you still have it? You do? I, I, I love that. I, I think it was after the fashion show that day, you went to an actual Habitat site and you took pictures like out at the construction yes. site. And it was just so dreams. cool. It was so cool. We'll try and post some pictures maybe of that so people can yeah, um, I'll, I'll get an absolutely. idea. Yeah, so your sister made that skirt um, and then she made, or if you find them and you can maybe post them side by side, um, you might be able to access those pictures better than me. But okay. um, yeah, you've come a lot, long journey with the different skirts and with working with your sister. So I love that it's right now, it's like a family occasion wearing it. And um, I just love that you're showing up and you're being real about what's happening. And mm -hmm. um, we're not pretending that because of this pandemic, that things aren't slowing down that the even the shipping is slower on things right yeah. now <laughs> and there's a landscaping crew and my dogs are going to go crazy so this is a, i was testing out doing the podcast from my office and not from my closet and so i think i'm going to end up back in the closet <laughs> cole girly come here come here come on come here Okay, sorry, Margaret. No problem. That's the tears and tool of life, I guess. Um, yeah, so your skirt's now in New York. Very cool. And I, the gosh, probably the first year, the first few months I met you, you had come in and you were volunteering with Habitat for Humanity. And I was just so intrigued by you. One second, Margaret. Girly, girly, come in. I'm so sorry. Um, I was so intrigued by how you were stepping into like your imagination and sort of like that creative energy. And, you know, you were running these workout classes and you were mentoring different people in the pageants that you were participating in. Mm -hmm. And you were just showing that there was a different side to what we normally see you know like i had this idea in my head about pageants and then i met you and i thought oh my gosh um this is beautiful work and um you know anytime anyone we, i have a conversation with anyone about stuff like that i'm always talking about oh well, there's my friend margaret and this is what she does because it is so different and i can't help but wonder like while you were growing up, was there some inspiration? Was there someone that you looked up to? Is there someone that's inspiring you in the world now that keeps you connected and remembering to connect with that energy? Because you, you're doing it all the time. I mean, even though you're showing the darker parts and the rest that you need, you're still showing up. So I'm wondering how, I don't know, how that continues to happen or how that came to be. Uh, well, Growing up, I had, you know, my, my, I had strong family connections. Um, but actually, I think I get it from my little sister now. Um, oh. My little sister, I, I've got two younger sisters, three younger sisters, um, two that I grew up with. And uh, um, Victoria, she's the one that got me introduced into pageants. But she's the one that, like, helped me come out of that shyness, out of feeling like I couldn't fit in and letting those colors out. She's the one that helped me literally because I used to wear all black. Literally, I wore blacks and browns and I, you would not see me in yellow or hot pink or bright green. She literally brought the color out of me. So my little sister became my mentor, became the person I looked up to. So she, she's, yeah, <laughs> literally. And I, it, it's funny. I didn't, think about it until now she used to yell at me <laughs> if I see you in black there's gonna be a problem because I <gasps> stayed in dark drab uh, suppressive colors and she brought out wanting to add things to my mask and bling to everything and color and 
even so much as getting my hair and nails done, I didn't do that. So she's the one that kind of brought that out. And then it also opened me up to not staying at home. Um, I do live with depression and I went through a depression where I didn't leave my house. And having volunteering to do, Miss Amazing, volunteering with that group, with Habitat, all the other groups that I've gotten connected with, it got me out. And then all the things that I thought were bad about me, people in those groups all said that's what was good about me. So it really just, all of that just kind of opened up and let me start being me, being silly, goofy, short and crazy me, and not apologizing for it. I, I love that. And I've, I've personally, I've witnessed that <laughs> firsthand to watch you walk across that stage in front of that entire banquet hall wearing your sister's beautiful creation and just owning it and just showing up. And I, I just, I've always just thought, well, I'm at a loss for words, like that you have to be afraid during some of these circumstances and you're showing up anyway. And, and I love well, that you talked about- I'm terrified every time I'm on stage. Yeah, I see? Absolutely That's terrified I mean. every time I'm on stage. Um, when I model, when I compete, even when I teach class, I teach class weekly, I'm terrified <laughs> every time. <laughs> See, and that's so inspiring to know that you're that you're afraid and that you're showing up anyway. And I I think that's a lot of what the whole tears and tool message is about. It's about you know us showing up even when we're scared. If things are lining up, and then resting, like you showed in your in your pictures. Oh my goodness, so much <laughs> good stuff. So much real good stuff. Um, Oh, where was I even going with the interview? I'm trying to remember. Um, so, so I often ask what um, people who come on the show wanted to be when they were little kids. So I'm curious if there was, if it's lining up with what you're doing now in the world, or if it was just something fun that you connected with as a child and you've gone in a different direction. Um, what did that look like for you? Um, I... I'm not sure what I want to be as a kid. Like when I was a kid, I kind of had some of those kid aspirations. I wanted to be famous and I wanted to live in a mansion. I didn't have like a career goal. Um, I thought I would be at a stereotypical nine to five behind the desk. So I'm glad it didn't take that route. I, it, in wow. high school, I was at a high school college fair and completely went in a direction that my mom didn't even believe me. When I told her that I wanted to get into the Merchant Mariner field, she was like, sure, honey, whatever you want, I'm there for you. She was being a supportive mom, but she didn't believe it. And neither did I. And <laughs> I ended up moving to the Midwest working. I work on a casino boat. I've worked on a tugboat. I've worked um, out on an oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico. So it has opened me up to things that I, I never thought I would be doing. Um, and I'm not sure where the switch happened. I was not a child that enjoyed getting dirty, working outside, sweating, and that's what I do on a regular basis. <laughs> um, I think part of it is when I was in high school, I didn't really like high school and I didn't wanna go to college that felt like high school. And sure. I kind of could tell at that age that I was, to inside myself and I wanted to step out. I wanted to step out of the box. So maybe my lack of childhood aspirations kind of led me into trying to do extra as I grew up. Wow. Yeah, I can, I can relate to, I remember like they would give you those, do you remember they would give you those forms, um, mm -hmm. like career readiness forms and, and it would have like, all the different things you could be on there. And I could remember looking and thinking, none of my things are, <laughs> are on yeah. this. Because this then also back beautiful. then, they didn't say that girls could go out and work on ships and girls could go out and work on oil rigs. It was like, girls can, you know, be secretaries and girls can be the office manager and girls can work in retail. They didn't give you those options. And as time went on, these options are opening up and it's like, we can do it all. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, it's so true. That's why I'm so glad you're one of the first people to uh, to join the Tears and Tool group, the, tr the giant tribe that is all of us, you know, because uh, I really think that we need more of that messaging and I think you're the perfect person to, to show it right now. So oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> all right, so I want you to tell us a little bit more about um, your special project that you have going on. I know I've been keeping up a little bit on Instagram and um, just following your work, but it's super interesting with the travel. So I would love for you to just share with us a little bit about that. Or oh, and uh, let so us know where we can find you to, to, to follow that work as well. It's called States of Service, SOS. Um, and I chose SOS because it's the call for help. And that's what volunteering is, is answering the call for help. I love volunteering. I love travel. And um, when I won, I won my international role model title in 2017. So I traveled the entire year from state. I don't, I think every month I was in a different state. And a couple of those times I got a chance to volunteer while there. So it was like, I can do both of these simultaneously. So I could take a week and go to Arizona. And one of those days, even if it's just for an hour at a soup kitchen, I can do two things at one time. And I feel like, especially as divided as the world is right now, one of the unifying things is volunteering. I have volunteered next to multimillionaires and I volunteered next to someone that didn't know where their next meal was coming from. But in that hour, two hours, however, whatever that time frame was, we all worked together and no one cared what the other one made. No one cared what their political affiliation was. No one cared what their religious affiliation was. No one even cared what the skin color is. And that's right on top. You can't miss that. But no one cared for that unifying hour, five hours, how, whatever the time frame was. So it feels even more important now than when I originally thought of it and started doing it and putting a name to it. But I've seen it, even when I've had people tell me, oh, don't go to that area because you're gonna run into trouble. I go to that area and I make friends. And I've got friends all over the world now. I've got friends in every corner of every affiliation. So I wanna promote that more. I want people to get out and help your neighbor and helping your neighbor, even for that hour, you can forget those differences and you can become one. And then if the two of us help the next neighbor, that's three of us. And then we help the next neighbor, that's four or five of us. And before you know it, we're back at a peaceful place because we need it nowadays. Um, and I get a lot of joy from it. Um, People often say, what do you get from it? And of course it's about giving, but I walk away with a lot of joy. Um, meeting people, talking to people, and knowing that I helped someone and maybe changed someone's opinion. Maybe gave them an idea. Maybe they've been wanting to help or volunteer. I often hear people say, well, I don't know how to do anything. Well, do you like to read? You can read a book to a senior citizen or a child in the hospital. Um, I don't know how to build a house. Well, neither do I, <laughs> but I know how to hammer a single nail. Um, yes. Do you, I don't know how to sew a dress. You don't have to sew a dress, but maybe you can go help someone sort their material so they can sew the dress. So there's something out there that we all can do to make a difference. And it doesn't have to be in my hometown because the earth to me is my hometown. <laughs> Oh, I and love that. It takes away that, oh, I'm from Indiana and I'm better than you because you're from New York. No, we're from the earth. So if I help you in your hometown and you help me in my hometown, now we have a connecting fiber. Oh and my that gosh, can go everywhere. writing this down. I have to write <laughs> this down. The earth is my hometown. I love that so much. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm like seriously writing it down. Okay. Um, oh, I love yeah, that. Yeah, because I just feel like it adds to the, the division. Um, you know, you have the fun divisions of, I like the Cubs and you like the Sox, and I'm not a sports fan, so I don't even know if that's the same team or the same sport. But you have those fun divisions of, you know, I'm rooting for Team A, you're rooting for Team B. But you have those people that seriously will not talk to you because you're from this town or that state. 
but if we've helped each other in those towns and those states, we now, okay, I know at least one person in Illinois that I like, or at least one person in Kentucky that I like, and it expands from there. I love it. I, I love that you've created this project and that it can help inspire other people. I, what, the earth is my hometown. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, I'm a Chicago Heights girl, but the earth is my hometown. I love that. I just love hearing that. Yeah, I, I was born in Barbados. I, my family moved to uh, Brooklyn, New York, then to Queens. I went to school in the Bronx. I moved to Indiana. I've lived and worked out of Florida. I'm back in Indiana now. I've got family in Japan, um, Maryland. Uh, where's, where's the other one? Miami, I've got family all over. So to say I only belong to one spot seems crazy. Oh, so I love it. I'm everywhere. <laughs> I love it. And we all are, if you think about it, you know, wow. And I love this idea of you saying like, even if you go and you volunteer for an hour yeah. of your day, like, I think we put so much pressure on ourselves to like do it all or do it right, you know? And so we mm -hmm. think we have to do a certain amount of time and to hear you say, you know, I, to me, you're like the super volunteer. I've known you for years, but um, <laughs> for you to say like, yeah, I could work five hours over here, you know, helping build the house, or I could do an hour at a soup kitchen mm -hmm. and, and both are doing something to help the world. I think that's yeah. super cool for us to remember when we're talking about balance and, um, you know, showing up in the world just as we are without all the yeah. pressures. And not feeling like you have to put in 80 hours a week um, you can write cards. Um, I was making these little bracelets. I'd literally sit and watch movies all day and make bracelets. Um, so I didn't have to leave my house if someone has transportation issues or there's so many ways to give back. Even a phone call um, can count and does count. I recently found out about an app and I haven't used it yet, but there is a program that one of my young pageant friends told me about there's an app you can download and someone who is seeing impaired can log into that app and ask you to help them find the milk in the fridge. And you can do that from your, from your couch. <laughs> and I haven't done it yet and I'm really looking forward to trying it, but you can actually like literally you can be like, Hey, my nurse isn't here today and I need to find the milk. Help me find the milk in my fridge and you help them find the milk and then you log off you've just changed someone's world in five minutes and you didn't leave your house. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And That's... when I find out about it, I'll let you know. <laughs> I want yeah. to get a little more detail. I'll let you know. Please do. Yeah. And so I want to know about that app and I want to hopefully see pictures of that Habitat uh, skirt and uh, maybe a side by side of your sister's work online would be awesome yeah. to show people. So I can't believe we're already like at time. Um, <laughs> yes, um, it was super fast. Um, where can people find um, Instagram, right? As far as following so, your project? I am on Instagram, States of Service. I believe it's underscore in between. I can uh, um, put it on the tears and tool. Okay. Um, or I'll send it to you so you can post it. I'm also okay. on Facebook under States of Service. Okay, very um, cool. Both are, it's a picture of a map of um, the United States with states of service written through it. Um, those are the two places that I post. I'm a little more active on Facebook than Instagram because I'm still learning. <laughs> My sister okay. is still teaching me, uh, but those are the two places. And then sometimes I just post directly to my, um, to my Facebook, which is just my name, Margaret Harding and also on Instagram, which is be the warmth and the light is the Instagram. Yes. But I can post all those because I don't remember what has an underscore under it or so. Yeah, it's if to you find. wanna um, maybe share some pictures of the, the skirts and um, yeah, wherever we can find you, that would be awesome. Or okay. like if you send them to me when we announce the podcast episode, I can also tag you in that as well, so. Okay. It was so nice talking to you. Please continue to um, uh, share Ooh, your beautiful me. photos online. I love seeing all of them and getting to connect with you that way. And 
thank you for believing in Tears and Tool and making it your own and just sharing your wisdom and your beauty and your magic with all of us. I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for being here, Margaret. Thank you for doing this, for starting Tears and Tools. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.